Methods in a class are blocks of code that do something. The program executes the statements inside them whenever these methods get called. The term methods is often used interchangeably with functions, but we'll refer to them as methods for this video. Hi, I'm Victor, and today on Height Above Sea Level, we'll be looking at methods in C Sharp. Before we get started, if you want to talk more about this kind of thing, be sure to follow me on Twitch at Heights Above Sea Level, where I do some live coding sessions as well as try and answer some of your questions as best I can. This video references concepts I covered in the classes and access modifiers videos, so if you feel lost at any point, watch those videos first and I'll link them to the top right of your screen. Okay? Methods. Methods are declared in a class, and each method has what's known as a method signature. So we've seen methods before, and if you watch the classes video, we declared these methods start, move forward, and stop. So why don't we look at another type of method? So a method has what is known, like I said, as a method signature. But what's a me method signature? A method signature includes the access modifier. In this case, we have things like public, private, that's the access modifier, that's the first part of the signature. The second part is the return type. This can be void, int, string, list, whatever you have, character, bool. That's the return type. The next part is the method name. And then finally, we have the method parameters. So let's declare a method using this method signature that we just learned about right now. So these are the methods we used before. They all return void. For this particular method, I'm going to use one that returns something else, like an integer. So let's start with the method signature of public, the method signature, the return type is float, and then the name of the method is calculate speed, and then the parentheses, and then the parameters that we're going to use is the distance in kilometers, that's the first parameter. The second parameter is float time in hours. But one thing you may have noticed is that unlike these ones, we're already getting a red underline. So what does that mean? We're not returning, we haven't returned anything in this method. We have to use something known as the return keyword. And then ignore that suggestion for now. A float, which can be a number that is a float. So if you return a number that is a float, then the error is gone and it satisfied the criteria that the return type is a float and we are indeed returning a float. If you try doing something like this, you return a string, you get an error over here because that's not the type that we're returning we're returning a float. So let's say in this method, we want to get the distance, the speed. So a speed in physics is the distance divided by the time. So we, what we can do first is we can say var speed is equals to distance in kilometers divided by time in hours. Just press tab twice and that finished that for me. And then now we can return speed like that. I press tab again. That's a uh, IntelliCode that comes in Visual Studio 2022. It gives you all these suggestions and it's a very nice feature that I like. But this is the speed that we're calculating using these parameters you define that we're given. These are called parameters, the options that are supplied inside methods. But look at this. We can shorten this a step further. Since speed is equal to distance divided by time in hours, we can take this time in hours, cut it, and return that instead. That way, we only use one line of code. And you see, it's the same thing, and it's a simple line of code. We don't need to do any interpretation. It's just distance divided by time in hours. That's it. Now, why don't we use this calculate speed? This is called an instance method the way it is right now. So in order to use this instance method, and not all methods, normally if, if you declare them like this, it's considered an instance method. Let me write this on the, just so you can see it. So when you, in order to use it, you need to create an instance of the class this method is defined in. So let's say var, let's create an instance of the class, forward is equals to a new car, and then that. Right. So in order to use the method, we do the dot notation. Remember dot notation, forward, dot, and this wrench gives us the properties. And then this cube gives us the method. Now we have calculate speed. And as you can see over here on the right, this little tip telling you the parameters that we define. Here's distance in kilometers. Whoops. So let me go back to calculate speed. Here's the distance in kilometers and the time in hours telling us the parameters. So why don't we calculate the speed? We can say the distance is 
you traveled 100 kilometers and we did that in two hours but if you try write this on the console with control and f5 give it a second it's building just a second it's still building it's a bit slow so here it is press any key any key to continue this is the default behavior of the console application that's because we haven't written anything on the console but remember this method it returns a float that means if a method returns something we can store that value it returns in a variable remember variables we can say var speed is equals to and then we take this and you put it here so if you hover over var it says and go to single set system that's single which is a float and remember this method returns a float which is the distance in kilometers divided by time in hours and that's returned to us and now we can store that inside a variable this we do the calculation we store it inside a variable called speed and then from here you can write it on the console and it should give us the speed again you can always hover over var to see the return type of the to see the type of this variable so hover over var it's of type one second it's type single which is a c-sharp way of saying float and forward is of type car so if i press control and f5 by writing the speed what do you think is going to happen remember the first parameter is distance second parameter is time where you trans to us distance divided by time and we've supplied that here what's what is it going to give us let's see 50. it's taking the first parameter when you call it like this this is now an argument when you're declaring an, a method or in other languages like JavaScript, they're called functions, but for C sharp, we call them methods. This is us declaring a methods. At this point, these are parameters. But when you're using the method, calling the method, I can even write that here. When you're calling slash invoking the method, these become arguments. So as you see, the arguments and the parameters, you can use them interchangeably, but I just like to make that little distinction. So he's taking this first one which is going to be a hundred and then dividing that by the second one which is two okay, two and then it's writing that on the console we can even use another value like we can say 50 and then we can say it took us uh maybe two or hours to travel 50 kilometers and our speed was 12.5 kilometers an hour and that right there is how to use an instance method why don't we use that? Why don't we look at a static method? Oops, sorry. Static method. So what's a static method? In order to use a static method, you have to add the static keyword. Now, what does this mean? This means that you can use this calculate speed without creating an instance of the car. Remember, without instant method, without uh, static keyword like and say it doesn't have static keyword doesn't have static keyword there we go so an instance method doesn't have a static keyword associated with it but a static method has one so as you see here it's declared a static that means we can use it directly from the class the car class without instantiating it let's look at this in the program class you see we already have an error it's saying it can be accessed as an instance because it's declared as static. So how in the world do we use it? Let me comment this entire thing with control K, control C, and now I can remove this. This is how we, this is how we use a static method. Say car dot calculate speed. And as you can see, it does the same thing. This is how you use a static method. You just call the name of the class itself and then go to the method and as you can see it's the same thing with console.writeline. line as you see we're going to the console class and we're getting the right line method console is static and right line is static so why would you want to use a static method let me write this uh on the console uh, calling static methods just so it's clear now why would you want to have a static method well if you don't want to instantiate the car which you might have reason to every time you call calculate speed you can just declare it as static that way you just use it once without having to declare an instance of a car that means you'll have to maybe initialize all these values and that could be tedious maybe all you want from this class is this method that's why you declare it as static as you can see even on the console or write line method this is the console class 
Right now, we only want the right line method. So we don't have to create another console. We only want to have one instance of the console. And that's the one we're using every time we press Control and F5. So that's why I would declare it as static method. You can even store this in a variable called speed. And then we can say speed. And it should give us the same value, 50. Remember the calculate speed method. Distance in kilometers is the fast parameter. Time in hours. Take that distance divided by the time in hours. And that gives us, what does it do? It returns to us a float, which we then store in a variable. And that variable is what we show on the console. Incidentally, you can also just do this. Just put this like this, control V. And then it should work. Control and F5, 50. But this is just for, um, to make things simpler. You don't have to do this. You can store it in a variable for a beginner. Just so that uh, as a beginner, you can know that you can do that, but even this is going to be fine for, as a, for a beginner. But as you progress, you can write it the other way, the shorter way. Another thing about static is that you can declare a class as static. And that's the console class it is a static class. Let me show you that. The thing about a static class is that you can't instantiate from a static, static class. Let's say static class. So the thing is you cannot inherit from it. Remember inheritance? I covered this inheritance in the access modifiers video. So if you're a bit confused about that, there's a section in the access modifiers video that talks about inheritance. So watch that to bring you up to speed. But the thing about a static class, you can't inherit from it and you can't instantiate it. Instantiate it. And also all its members must be declared as static as well, must be static. As you can see, when I declared this car, let me remove this just so you can see it again. The errors are gone, but if I return it, we're getting errors here because all these have to be declared as static. This has to be static. Look, if I add the static keyword, it's gone. If I add the static keyword over here, the error is gone because all members of a static class have to be static as well. And you can't inherit from this class and you can't instantiate it. As you can see here, we can't say var another car is equals to new car. You see, it's giving us an error. You cannot create an instance of the static class car. Same thing with console. You can't say console is equals to new console because you can't instantiate from the static class console. This is static. And so I hope you get the gist of that. Static classes cannot be inherited from cannot be instantiated and all the members must be declared as static as well. So you can use static if you want to have only one instance of a class in your program. All right, that is a static keyword in a nutshell. One more thing is actually the method. I can also remove this just so we're using instance methods instead of static methods. And you see now this is giving us an error. So we'll just go back to our our own instance method. And now everything should be fine. If I press control and F5, everything is working as intended. All right. One more thing about methods is that this return statement can be used by itself, but it's only used by itself when the return type is void. So what do I mean by that? Let's say in this move forward statement, move forward method, we can say if speed is less than zero, we can say return. So what does this mean? It means that if the speed is less than zero, don't do anything or stop execution at this point. If there's code before this, like if there was stuff over here, it would execute. But when it gets to this return statement, nothing below it gets executed. And we can even try that right now. So we can say forward dodge forward dot move forward. And I provide number like Minus one. Remember, minus one is an integer, so it's valid, but it's less than zero. So what's going to happen? It'll just return. If I press, control, let me remove this. Control and F5. We get nothing on the console, even though we call this move forward method that normally returns console or trite line writes on the console. The car is moving at this speed per hour, but because we've written this if statement, is the speed less than zero? Yes, it's minus one. So what happens next? 
we return from the method that means stop execution in a nutshell but if the speed if the move forward and I supply 12 and I press control on F5 it writes the car is moving at 12 miles per hour because this is now false is speed less than zero is 12 less than zero no so this is false this won't execute but this is going to execute the thing is the thing about a return statement is you can also you don't need to write an else statement here you can just leave this the way it is it's like an else statement is inferred if you write anything here because if this is false not if this is true nothing else gets written executed below it but if it's false then everything else below it gets executed so there's no really need for an else statement all right real quick if you enjoyed the content please consider supporting me over on patreon at patreon.com forward slash height above sea level and all patrons will get this custom sakura theme as a thank you from me for your support and i have all the instructions over on patreon on how to set up these colors so that your visual studio looks just like mine so if you're enjoying the content you like these colors and you want them for yourself consider supporting me over on patreon at patreon.com forward slash height above sea level all right now why don't we look at something known as optional parameters so let's say that in this method let me just write that over here optional parameters so let's say that in this method this calculate speed method you want these two to be or you want time in hours to be optional you can say this is equals to one that means that if you don't supply the time in hours then that means it will default to one it's like providing a default value in case someone doesn't specify this or they choose not to then it's always going to be one so why don't we see that on the con on the console let's say speed is equals to 50. let me put this at two whoops i pressed the wrong button put that at two and then maybe you can write this on the console cw speed control and f5 25 i can remove this because that's what's writing on the console again control and f5 25 all right you see we only provided one value why is the other one so we you see this first one is what we're providing for this first parameter but since we didn't provide a second one it defaults to two so it's going to be this 50 divided by two and if i only provide another only one parameter again it's going to be 500 which is 1000 divided by two and i can do the same for distance in kilometers so for this one if i say this is equals to uh, 100 and i don't supply any arguments you see it's working fine but if these were not optional let's say if i remove these equal sign you get an error because you're supposed to supply arguments these are now these are required arguments but if you put an equal sign they become optional arguments with default values with them so if i just call this it's always going to give me 50 because the default value for distance in kilometer the first parameter is always going to be 100 default value for time in hours is always going to be 2 if i press control on f5 50 because i didn't supply anything but if i supply the first one let's say 250 and then control on f5 125 how is this happening so if i supply a value this default is overwritten my value has precedence over this one so whatever i supply as a first argument will overrule this one but since i haven't supplied a second one we're still going to go to the default but then i can also use if i supply again on the second one the second parameter 25 which is 250 divided by 10. now that i supplied my own parameters or arguments for this method these are ignored and mine take precedence so that is that that right there is optional parameters maybe i can say float distance i can say use equal signs use equal sign in parameters i can say users users equal sign in parameters and that right there is optional parameters maybe you want this in your application maybe you don't want it i hope just that this explanation gives you some more context of whenever you want to have optional parameters this is how 
put them. Now from optional parameters, why don't we look at something else called positional parameters, parameters, and named parameters. So far we've been using what's known as positional parameters. So what does this mean? We've been supplying the arguments to this method in the same order as we declared them. You see, distance in kilometers is the first one. Let me remove this so that we can know we've moved from that topic. So, so far we've known that the first argument is distance in kilometers, and the second one is time in hours. And another way of seeing this is if you write the method, delete the parentheses, and then do it again, you'll see this little tool tip that tells you the order of the parameters, so that you know that 250 is the first one, or the first parameter is a uh, distance in kilometers, and the second one is going to be the time in hours. So let's say you had like a bunch of parameters, and let's say you didn't know, or you want to put them in order. That's where you use named parameters. Positional parameters, let me put this on its own line. Positional parameters are the same order as declared in the method. These are the ones that we've been using. But now name parameters is you use the name of the parameter and then you supply the value. So this is how we've been doing before, but one thing you can do is to use a name parameter. You specify, you go over here, time in hours, and then we say time in hours colon two. And then now we can say distance in kilometers, again, a hundred. As you can see, because we're using name parameters, the order doesn't matter. So I can say name parameters, order doesn't matter. As long as all of them are name parameters. So, so long as all, as long as all parameters are named parameters. And I'll tell you why in a second. So if you're using name parameters, it doesn't matter. You can have like seven of these and you can have them all mixed up. But as long as you use a name, the name of the parameter and the value that you're giving the semicolon and the value that you're given, it, it won't matter. So if, you press, if I press control and F5, it's going to give me 50 because the distance in kilometers is divided by the time in hours. And that's what gives me 50. Remember this method returns that and it doesn't matter what order they are. The thing is also you can mix them. So you can mix name parameters with positional parameters, but the only condition in mixing this is that all the parameters no, positional arguments can only follow named arguments when the named arguments are in the correct position. All right. So let's say, let's add another one. Like, let's say, uh, string message. And then we can say, let's just use this. We're not doing anything with this. With this, I can just say car name, or let's just call this car name. Car name is equals to just for the demo purpose we can say c is equals to car name just so we don't get that error if we haven't used this parameter all right so you see we have three parameters here we want to mix both name parameters and what do you call them positional not positional yes positional parameters or positional arguments again you can call them positional arguments or positional parameters I'm just going to go with, par uh, with parameters. All right. So this is the calculate speed method. Now we know, now we know that it takes three arguments, but let's say you want to mix them. So we can say the first one is 250 or let's just say 200. The second argument, we can say 10. And we can say the third one, car name is equals to or GT. And this is how we use them together. You see, we don't get an error. And if you press control and F5, it still works. But the thing is, if you move this to a different part like that, you get an error because named arguments is used out of position, but is followed by, the, by an unnamed argument. If you're going to mix them, the car name, which is the last argument should be in the correct position. So it should be last like this. 
If you're going to mix them, just keep that in mind. And that right there is positional arguments and named arguments or positional parameters and named parameters. So why don't we look at something else known as method overloading. And I'm almost winding up. I just want to touch on a few things then we can wind up and call it good. So method overloading. What is method overloading? A method overload is a method with the same name, but different parameter types. So what do I mean by, what do I mean by this? A method called calculate speed, but has different parameter types. Why do we create one? Remember the method signature? Let me put a space here just so it's clear. So the method signature, public, and this one I want to return a string. Same name, calculate speed. And I can remove this and re remove this. So same name, same name, different parameter types. So we can say float speed and we can say string or name, or we can even use an integer. We can say, what does this return? If speed, let's do a bit of checking. If speed is less than zero, we can say, we can say return this. Let me, give me a second here. Return a string. What's the string going to say? Let's use, well, let's just use this. The car is not moving, but we can return another message. So we can say string interpolation. Remember that the, we can use the car name is moving at, remember the parameter that we have here, speed miles per hour. So this is just, this is just an example. The second method isn't calculating the speed or actually let's do, let's calculate the speed. So we can say load distance in miles. And then we can say float time in hours. And then we have a string, our name. So speed, we can remove this. Then we just return this. Let's calculate the speed first. So var speed is equals to distance in miles divided by time in hours. And then we use that in here. All right. So this is method overloading. This method has the same name, calculate speed, but different parameter types. I can even use integer for this one, just so we can see the difference as clearly as possible. So we have one that uses floats and one that uses integers and also has an extra parameter. This is a method overload. This is an overload of the calculate speed method. So why don't we use this? And again, this is, this is still an instance method just like this one, because we haven't declared it as static. So why don't we use it? So let's say forward.calculate speed. As you can see this little tooltip, it says plus one overload. That means there's another version of this calculate speed method that you're trying to access. Let me just add again, dot calculate speed. You see that plus one overload. If I press tab, and then if I open the parentheses, we'll see over here an arrow. That arrow wasn't there before. Look, if I comment this out with control K, control C, and I come back here, delete the parentheses and type them again, that arrow is gone. But if I add this overload for that, this calculate speed method, now we see this arrow. And if you click it, we'll see the parameters for the second one. Right now, this is distance in kilometers and time in hours. Look distance in kilometers and time in hours. But if I choose a second option, I press down on, on this one, escape to close that other menu, then down. I see distance in miles, time in hours and car name. This is an overload. So for this second one, I can say 200 miles in, in uh, two hours and the car name, we can say, I even use a, 
an optional parameter we can say board focus and if I like remember again it returns a string so we can store this string inside a variable let's say var message equals to calculate speed and we can display that message on the console control and f5 the forward focus is moving at 100 miles an hour and that's because we're using this version of calculate speed if we use this version like we do over here we can just that just displays on the console the speed control and f5 sorry uh Let's try that again. Control and FI, the forward focus is moving at 12 miles per hour. Oh, it's because I provided three arguments. If you provide the number of arguments that satisfy this criteria, this is the one that's going to be used. But if, if I provide two arguments, I'm going to use this one. And if I, those arguments must be of the same type. So if I provide two floats, it's going to use this one. If I provide two floats, two integers, and a third one called string, it's going to use this one. So I'm going to provide two values that are floats. Then I say, Control and F5, 20. So that right there is method, method overloading in a nutshell. Real quick, as we're winding up, I know this video is a bit long, but I'm almost done. Scope. I have mentioned this. Let me put it up here in this other methods. I have mentioned scope that I'll talk about scope in my previous videos if you've been watching them. And I'm going to talk about it here today. So what is scope? Scope, it tells us if you have access to to a variable or if you have access to if it tells us it tells us if you have access to a variable a property or a field or anything mostly variables so let's go with that so what is scope if i declare a value here var let's say name is equals to i don't know tony name is equals to Tony. The thing is, Tony variable, this variable name is only available inside this method. It is only in scope inside this method. We can't ask it, we can't access Tony in here. Look, if I try and say name, I get an error because it doesn't know what is name. That's because name was declared inside this method. So only this method has access to this name variable. It is in scope. But what about this? You see all these, they're outside this method, but they're in the same class. So we have access to these inside this method. And you can even see, we can say color, not collections, but we can say color, let's say is equals to white. You see, we have access to this color variable because it's out declared out here. But we don't have access. We can also have access to color over here because it is declared at the top level, at a higher level. This is a higher level. This one is declared inside the start method, so it's only available inside here. You can't access it anywhere else. So anything that's in scope, anything that is in scope, we have access to. And anything that is outside of scope, we have access to. And anything that is out of scope, we don't have access to. And this shouldn't be confused with pub with access modifiers. This is just these are things that have already been been declared, and it's mostly for variables. So if it's declared inside this method, it's only accessible inside this method. And a rule of thumb is that anything inside the curly braces is available inside is available for use inside that those curly braces so you see the car class this is the container this is everything that's inside the car class since this is at the top level it can be used anywhere inside this car class that means it can be used inside these methods but what's inside the curly braces can't be used outside them just think of it that's think of that as a rule of thumb what's inside the curly braces any variables you declare in here can't be used outside of them. But any variable outside the curly braces can be used inside the curly braces inside the method. 
That's why these are available here, here, and here. But this name variable is only available inside these curly braces, but not it's not available out here because it's only available in here in these curly braces where it's declared in. And that is a, that is scope in a nutshell. I hope that's a bit clear. Remember anything inside these curly braces, the car curly braces, is available inside here and any other styled curly braces, methods, whatever you have them. So it goes from the top level curly braces, any curly braces inside them. I hope I'm not rumbling too much. I hope this is clear. I won't go any further than that. And I hope that helps you understand scope a bit better. But if not, please leave a comment in the description, in the comment section below and ask me and I will try and explain a bit better or ask them on Discord. But that's all I have for you guys. Did you learn something new today? Did you learn about methods? Did you find them interesting? And have you used methods in other programming languages when are coming to C Sharp for the first time? Let me know in the comments below. Again, if you did enjoy the content, please consider supporting me on, on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash hide above sea level and you will get this custom Sakura theme. Also, I do stream on Twitch if you want to talk about this kind of thing live on stream. And if that doesn't work, come hang out on Discord instead. Just click the link in the description below and become a member of the Water Tribe today. Thank you so much for watching and as always, from me to you, deuces.